Hunter, Jason Day into the interview room. Jason, uh, it's hard to start with accolades. Uh, number one in the FedEx Cup, you'll become number one in the world tomorrow. Just talk a little bit about the, uh, the dream that you're living right now. Um, yeah, the, I mean, just four out of the last six, was, it's been kind of a dream run for me. Um, you know, to, to put it into words, it's, uh, it's quite shocking. Uh, really, uh, to really understand what I've accomplished. Not only, I mean, golfers have accomplished this kind of feat before, but for, for me personally, I thought I, I always had it in me, but, you know, just to be able to do it and, and play the way I have um, and finish the way I have has been a, a fantastic ride. Um, this week has been, been a, a bit of a whirlwind, you know, especially with how I started the week shooting 18 under par through the first two rounds and then on top of it you know the last two days were very very emotional for me um very hard to sleep at night uh, knowing that I had the chance to get to number one and obviously I talk about it freely now but you know the last time you know, I've been here in the last four days but I mean it's been very very difficult for me to try and downplay getting to number one because I've really wanted to reach this goal for a very long time now. And you'll turn your focus to Eastlake now in the Tour Championship. Yes. Just comment about your uh, goals next week. Yeah, um, I'm going to take Monday and Tuesday off. I'm going to go back home. And then I'm going to fly down to, to Atlanta on Tuesday night, try and rest up as much as possible. These weeks are very, uh, very highs. There's a lot of highs and lows. So... Um, I want to try and get back to that neutral uh, state of mind, not only physically but mentally as well, and then uh, get into the, the last tournament of the year for us, the Tour Championships. I mean, this is uh, kind of it for us. Um, I have to kind of refocus once I get, to, to, once I get back tonight after we celebrate um, and Monday comes around, I'll start, I'll start thinking about Tour Champs and I'll start thinking about winning that tournament and then on top of it, winning the FedEx Cup Championship, or well, FedEx Cup, actually, sorry, to, you know, really put your name down in history. Okay, great. We'll start with Gary. Jason, uh, the wins aside, could you talk about the level of golf you've played this summer right. and the satisfaction that comes with getting to that level? Um, it's, once again, it's been one of those kind of summers that it just it for me personally it's been great because I haven't had the chance to stop and for me to be able to not have that chance to stop to really kind of you know when I have a week off I'm maybe taking a one or two days off but then I'm back at it practicing you know that I don't really get to stop so I'm just you know being able to keep that momentum going keep that uh, good confidence and and the good play up and uh, it's kind of been a really quick summer for me, but it's been the best ever. And the way I feel about my game confidence level um, has been the highest I've ever had in my entire life, um, especially as a, as a professional. But, um, you know, it's just it's been an amazing kind of run for me. And now it, it just tops it off even better, just being able to get to number one in the world. Okay. Ron and then Adam. Chase, when you won at Torrey Pines this year, you say every year I come in motivated, but this year... Uh, more motivated and to yeah. use your words you said I want to kick some butt this year yeah is, is this what you meant yeah I uh, definitely yeah definitely I, I I meant it and um you know I was more motivated um you know this year to to accomplish that goal of getting to number one in the world and I said it earlier this year and um kind of really kicked it on I kind of went through a little bit of a slow s spell in the middle of my you know season but uh, after the Open Championship, uh, after the U.S. Open and the Open Championship, kind of really just started kicking it on, and to win four out of the last six has been kind of—it's been amazing. But uh, I mean, I just—I worked very, very hard um, in the off season last year, and even in the off weeks that I've had this this year, I've been working very hard on my body, on my game, to to really understand that um, the stuff that I'm doing now will work it will pay off so i just got to keep making sure that the process that i'm that i've got right now um and the hard work that i put into my game is is going to pay off and just understand that it's okay to uh you know put the hard yards in now and and if it doesn't happen right away then it's okay but knowing that and looking at it now that four out of the last six tournaments that i've won um 
it's all paying off and it's paying off very quick. Okay, Adam and then Teddy. Jason, when did the dream of becoming number one, when did it take shape? I've ever since I was a you know a 13 year old kid, um, I started really thinking about playing competitive golf more. Uh, but once I started playing golf, reading the book about Tiger Woods, watching him win in '97, um, also. But I always thought you know I think I could turn pro when I was 14, 15 years old. But I, you know I always you know once I got to turning professional, I said okay now I want to try to accomplish getting to number one in the world um and that's kind of eight, around 18 years old when i when i really wanted to kind of push for that and as a follow-up how did you feel when you when you made the comments so publicly when you first came out um how did you feel with the response that the people took you know? it wasn't the it wasn't the response that i was expecting um i mean i i expected to get a little bit but not the response that i got from pretty practically everyone um but it's good to sit in this chair right now, um, knowing that uh, what I said back at you know when I was 18 years old, um, it's taken some time. But uh, you know, nine years later, ten years later, it's it's worked out, um, and now I'm I'm sitting on top of the world right now. All right, Teddy, and then Bob. Jason, uh, two questions, if I may, yes. over here. Uh, when did you finally feel like you had it today? walking down 18 when I hit the second shot right next to the green. Um, I mean, it was, it was a stressful day because I saw Ricky kind of making a charge. It's funny with these things because on my backside, um, I played pretty good golf on the front side um, by the three putt. But um, on my backside, I know that if I would have given back one or two shots, that leaves the door open, similar to the PGA Championship. Um, the the up and down on 12 was huge for me. To uh, the up and down on 12 was huge for me, but I mean it was once again it was something where if I went okay from 20 under to 19 or 18 or even 17 under, that you know gives guys one or two shot to work with, and anything can happen from there. I know that when I was walking down after the second shot into 18, I knew that I had a five shot lead. It would have been a very disastrous, you know, shots coming in if I would have lost the lead from there. So kind of walking up, and I was right before the, the creek, you know, walking up to the green, that's when we started talking about it, me and Cole, and started really, under, you know, understanding what the situation really was about. And, I mean, it was just kind of... I mean, it's been a, a goal of ours, personally, me, me and myself, Colin, I mean... He should be in the Hall of Fame back home in, as a PGA a teaching professional. But, I mean, to take a 12-year-old kid from nothing and put, turn him into the best golfer in the world um, is a pretty nice achievement. So, I mean, I have him to thank a lot of this too. And how were you finally able to fall asleep? That's unusual that you toss and turn? Uh, um, no, it's, it's, it's not. It's... I mean, sometimes I get good sleep, but majority of the time I don't get good sleep. Uh, tonight I won't, will not get good sleep. I usually, Sunday nights, if I'm in contention, I, I get about two hours of sleep uh, just because I'm so amped from what I, I did today. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it was kind of, it was more so because I, had, I knew that if I won, there was some good perks that went along with it, staying at number one on the FedEx Cups, getting to number one in the world. Um, going from the, my sixth win to my seventh win in a very short period of time. So there was a, there was a number of things that were kind of playing on my mind. And I just couldn't think clearly. And when there's things running through your mind, you just can't go to sleep. All right, let's go to Bob and then Ben in the back. Uh, Jason, uh, what, what do you make of the um, player of the year scenarios now with you and, with you and Jordan now that you have a fifth win? Yeah. Um, I think it might change some people's minds about it if I – go ahead and win next week and, and win the FedEx Cup. That'll definitely uh, move some heads, I think. But um, once again, we, we can't deny what Jordan has done in the major championships this year. It's been for a 22-year-old kid to accomplish what he's done in the major championships, to even have a, an opportunity at winning the Grand Slam in the, in, in the year, calendar year. Um, that 
has been an amazing ride for him. Um, but you know what? It's just it's hard to, to kind of say what you know. You know, with my fifth win, he's had four wins, but he's had a lot of top tens. I mean, he, I think I still think. It's him, um, but I'm hoping that I can go and win next week and get people talking about it a lot more. All right, let's go Ben and then Ryan and Sean. Mate, uh, back to, you know, 10 years ago when people talk about conflict, what are we the number one? What do you think 18-year-old Jason would say to those guys now, and what do you think you would say to those guys now? Um, I'd love to say I told you so, but um, it, it, that wouldn't be very nice. Um, it's, it's okay to dream big. It's okay to to say what you want to do. And for people that don't respect that, um, then you really don't need to give them the time. Because who, who am I or who are they to tell you that you shouldn't be able to do something? And to be able to sit up here today, number one in the world, um, looking back when I was an 18-year-old kid, very full of confidence, um, there's not much I would say, you know, I would still, still thank them because that was kind of the fuel that, that lit the fire for me, um, especially with the dedication over these last few years because I know that a lot of people were thinking against me on that and uh, I'm glad I accomplished it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would love to win all the majors. Um, get the career, career Grand Slam would be fantastic. To win as many tournaments as I can. Um, I, I'm just here for this one purpose, and that's to try and get better each and every day and, and try and win as much as I can while I can. Um, it's not gonna. It's not gonna last forever, so I may as well do it quickly. And um, you know. Just be nice about it too. Um, everyone that has any sort of involvement in these tournaments that I win, I mean, they, they don't go unheard. Um, I, I, we do appreciate what, what has, uh, has happened to, to run events like this. Um, but, you know, I, I, I haven't really quite thought about what, you know, those, those are the goals that I that I always wanted. And I've ticked them off now. So, um, you know, I, once again, I'm just going to try and win as many majors and many tournaments as I can. But the career Grand Slam would be nice. Okay, Ryan, and then to the front. Jason, a lot of kids will dream of of winning the Masters or winning 19 majors or whatever. You, why do you think that being world number one was so important to you at such a young age? Um, I don't know. I just always had a, a, a vision of me standing on top of the earth when I was a kid and know that right now there's no one on this planet that's better than me. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, that I'm, out of all the golfers that are in the world playing right now, that I'm the best. And um, that just, it's such a good feeling. Um, that's kind of what I was thinking back when I was a little kid. But to be able to do that, um, I, I, I really I just it doesn't I can't really think about I, I don't know it feels surreal right now that it just I just still still feel like what I did yesterday or the day you know before that I'm still a regular guy that is really good at hitting a golf ball. No, actually it does. You know I just I you think that'd be this big shining moment that uh, yeah this is great and you'd like have some sort of peace. Um, it's kind of been a little crazy for me lately, but uh, I'm hoping that, it's, that it sinks in. I don't know. I mean, the PGA really still hasn't sunk in from winning the PGA Championship because it's been so quick. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it, I don't know, it just feels normal. I feel like I, feel like I did yesterday. I mean, it's just the, the same. I just, 
uh, once again, I'm just a regular, regular guy like everyone else. We just, everyone has dreams. As long as you stick to them and, and work hard, you can accomplish anything. Okay. Uh, Jason, I just wonder what it means for you to be just the third Australian to be the world's best and what it means for the game back home. And also, yeah. just a thought for your mum, who made so many sacrifices for you to be yeah. able to, to, to be where you are right now. My, oh, wow, my mum. I, 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 looking back on it um, and looking where we were, uh, what the sacrifices she's made for me, the, the pain and, and all the hard work that she's had to put into not only myself but into my sisters, into our family to keep, it, keep the family afloat. Um, for her to have a son that is number one in the world, is, it, must be, it must be nice. I'm, I'm looking forward to calling my mum and, and getting to talk to her about it. I know that she's... Although she's been the greatest supporter, she's been the most strict on me, especially in regards to winning tournaments and stuff. She's been the most hard on me, and it's what has made me work. My work ethic is from her. But um, to be the third Australian to get to, to number one in the world, um, I'm hoping this puts a spark in, in not only junior golf but amateur golf as well. Um, we are a, a, a very <laughs> proud nation, sporting nation, um, of, you know, we only have 23 million people, but we're very, very proud of our sports, very proud of our Australians that are not only here in America, but around the world that are competing and playing against very tough individuals in their sports. So uh, to be able to represent Australia, um, you know, today was, was great. Um, you know, and, and the people that had, had involvement in me getting to where I am today, I, I can't thank them enough. Okay, Adam? Jason, who was the first person that really believed in you in this dream of becoming number one? Yeah, Cole. Um, kind of, we put it together. We had a plan. We said uh, we were trying to get to number one in the world at 22. That was our whole plan. That's we had an actual plan. Okay, this is what you're going to do. This is what you need to practice. This is how everything needs to happen. And at 22, you're going to be number one. And I'm five years late. So <laughs> six years late. Um, but. Uh, I mean, it's better late than never, right? I mean, he's, he's been uh, an amazing supporter ever since I met him, ever since we had that first fight. Um, and coming back to apologise to him, the amount of work that he puts in every single day. No, and he walked the course. He didn't go out and physically walk on the golf course, but he walked the course this morning. So he walked 36 holes today to make sure that I, we made the right decisions on certain holes, knowing that 5 and 13 were very, very difficult pin positions that you had to respect. Um, I'm not sure if any other caddies have walked. I'm sure there are, but um, stuff like that is what you get the edge. That's how you get the edge for, for your guy walking courses and, and doing that extra little bit so that you have that little bit more information that could possibly either make you play better and win tournaments or keep you in front. You also you talked about you always believed that you could do this, but yeah. you also said earlier this week that you, you kind of lacked self-belief. Yeah. How, what was the turning point, really, um, in putting it all together? It was all upstairs. I mean, it's all always upstairs to really understand uh, yourself in, in this situation, um, all the experience that uh, I've... I've had over not only this past summer uh, from the US Open on, even from the farmers, but all the good finishes that I had in major championships. Putting all that together, um, playing the way I've been playing. But the last piece of the puzzle was for me to really think my way around what I needed to do. Um, and the belief that I had in myself, it's slowly getting. You know, it was slowly getting to, to this point, and once it's, it opened up, it was, you know, it was, I just felt like it was going to kind of be like what I was when I was a junior and an amateur, where I just would walk on the golf green and, and feel like I was the best. And that's what it's starting to feel like right now. Okay. Anything else? All right. Congratulations once again, Jason Day. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks, Bush. Sorry. Appreciate it. Thank you.